The last thing we'll need to do to finish this packet tracer activity is configure the two switches. In order to do this, I'll need to detach this console cable from the router, drag it over to the switch, and put it into the console port on the switch. Now I should be able to get a console connection from this PC to the switch. I'll open the PC. I can click on the terminal, accept the default settings, and you can see that I have a console connection to the switch. I'll press enter, and there it is, switch. So now I can type enable and get to privileged user mode, and conf t to get to global config mode. Once here, I can type hostname s1 and change the switch's hostname to s1. So now that we're here, we can begin to put in the rest of these commands laid out in these configuration tasks, the ones that apply to the switch. So in global config mode, we can do the banner MOTD, allowed, with an exclamation point, and finish it off with a quotation mark. Whatever's in between the quotation marks will be the banner. So we'll do that. I'll put in the service pass, hit the tab key on the keyboard, service password dash encryption to encrypt all passwords. I'll put in the enable secret of class one, two, three, four, five. You can see over here that the minimum password length requirement of 10 characters was only requested on R1, so I don't need to do that for S1. I'll configure line console zero next. So I'll go line console zero. I'll put in the login local command and the exec tab, use the tab key on my keyboard to do the command completion to get exec dash timeout five minutes and zero seconds. Now, if we're going to do that, we should also probably create the user for this account, for this login local local database account. So what I'll do is I'll type exit, username, admin, and then a secret password of Dan's courses. Now let's configure the line VTY. So what I'll do is I'll say line VTY. And you can see here on number 12 that for S1, line VTY is going to be 0 to 15. We're going to need to do the same thing on S2 as well. So 0 to 15, so line VTY, and 0 to 15, so there'll be 16 lines. And I'm just going to type in login local, and then the exec timeout, 5 and 0 for 5 minutes and 0 seconds. And I'm also going to put in the transport input and then a space and a question mark, and it's going to be SSH. So we're only going to allow SSH connections into the switch. Now we haven't set up SSH yet, and we might as well do that next. So I'll put in an exit command here, get to back to global config mode. And to set up SSH, you have to have a few things configured. One, you have to have your host name configured. You can see we have it S1. You also need to have the domain configured. So we're going to have to set the domain name. So we'll say IP domain, and let's see here, dash name, and danscourses.com. So that sets the domain name. And now we can set up our security keys that we're going to need for SSH. So we'll put in the crypto command key generate RSA and hit enter. And then it asks us for the modulus. Now 512 is the default. We're going to go a little bit stronger to 1024. Everything that I'm doing here is listed in these commands here as requirements. Now that we have our security keys set, I'll go IP SSH version two and change the version of SSH from version one to version two. Okay, so now that that is done, we have SSH enabled. Now we need to set up the IP address 
and the gateway for the switch. Let's see here. It says on number 17, S1 and S2 with a default gateway, and S1 and S2 with interface VLAN 1 IP address. How We won't be able to SSH into the switch if the switch doesn't have an IP address. So we don't put the IP address on a physical interface on the switch. We put the IP address on the VLAN. So that's what we're going to do now. We'll say interface VLAN 1 to go into basically the VLAN 1 interface configuration mode. And this is a virtual interface or a switched virtual interface. Now we'll put in our IP address. Now for the IP address, we need to figure it out. It says here the switches get the last usable address in the subnet. Well, we had figured out previously that for the green network, the subnet is 4.64 all the way up to 127. So 64 is the network address, 127 is the broadcast address, so the last usable address would be 126. So that's the address we're going to give it. And it says here the switches get the last usable address. So 126, 192.168.4.126 slash 26. So we'll say IP address 192.168.4.126 and then the subnet mask and that is a 192 on a slash 26 and then the no shut command and you can see that the interface is now up at 4.126 now we need to also give the um, switch a default gateway and that will help us if we need to let's say telnet into the switch or telnet into another switch on a different network. We'll need to know what the gateway is. So I'll hit exit to get to global config mode and then IP default. I'll hit tab and that completes the command to default dash gateway and the gateway is 192.168.4.65. The first address in the network is 65. So that's the default gateway. Let's see here, what else? We did the, the console command. Uh, we need to save our configuration and back up our configuration to the TFTP server. So that's important. We're not gonna do IPv6 on the switches. At least it's not requested in how I put together this, uh, this practice lab. So I'll type exit to get to privileged user mode and then copy run start to save my configuration file from running config to startup config and now I want to uh, copy this configuration over to the TFTP server. So we'll say copy run for running configuration to TFTP and the next thing it asks us for is what's the IP address of that remote host. So the TFTP server is colon f but that's the ipv6 address let's see here the server gets the second address in the subnet so the subnet was the 192 subnet slash 28 and so the second address would be 194 so that's what we have to do 192.168.4.194 and the destination file name file name s1-config absolutely I'll just accept the default and it's writing the configuration file and it looks like writing running config I got two exclamation points here it looks like it worked so if I if I'm really unsure of whether I it copied or not one thing I can test is can I communicate with the two the, with the TFTP server so I can just try to ping it You can see I can successfully ping the TFTP server, so I'm sure it wasn't a problem to TFTP the configuration file over there. So that worked, and I think we're all good, and now we just need to do the same thing on the next switch. 